Baruchim Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. The topic tonight will be the on the night before a uh, newborn baby boy gets a circumcision, and also the blessings that are done at the circumcision. Now, the night before the circumcision of a young of a newborn baby boy is called Leil Shimurim, the night of vigil. The vigil is held to ward off anything that may interfere with the circumcision. Now the Medrash Tana de Veliyal states that the merit of circumcision is so great, so great, that it safeguards a Jew from purgatory. In fact, there's a Medrash that says that Abram Avinu, Abraham himself, sits at the gate of purgatory and takes out of line anyone who has a circumcision and does not allow him to enter into purgatory. Therefore, the Sutton, Satan, and his evil helpers try to see to it that circumcision should not be performed. In fact, we see today that there are movements, again, to, to uh, ban circumcision. San Francisco uh, it's become a thing, even though there have been health benefits that have been shown for men that are circumcised, that are, that are beneficial to the women that they are with. It is part of the tradition that on this night, the men in the family study Torah in the house where the infant sleeps. In addition... Young children are brought to the crib of the infant where they recite the first chapter of the Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel. And the blessing that Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov our father, gave to his grandsons on his deathbed. The blessing of, uh, many of us say it on uh, Saturday night after Shabbat, called Hamalak Goel Oti, be the angel who redeemed me. Again, found in the portion of the first book of Bereshit, in the last Sedra portion of the book, in the Vayechi in 48.16. The children are then given candies and other treats and even sometimes money. At the circumcision, there are three verses that are repeated by the guests to attend. And the first one is, Geshem shenichnas labrit, ken latorah chupa amaisim tovah. Just as he, meaning the child is being circumcised, has entered into the covenant, so may enter into the study of Torah, the marriage canopy, and the performance of good deeds. This verse is repeated twice during the circumcision. Now, the second verse is from Yecheskel, which says, Va'omra, Va'omra l'cha, the damayak tayi, the omer lachab, the damayak tayi, which means, and I said to you, by your blood, but by your blood you shall live, by your blood you shall live. Again, the verse is repeated twice. The third verse that is is repeated by the guest is from the Psalms and one eighteen, the first Psalm, Hodu lashem ki tov, ki liolam chasto, Hodu lashem ki tov, ki liolam chasto, which translates to means gives thanks to God for He is good. His kindness endures forever. Again, give thanks to God for he is good. His kindness endures forever. Now, the question becomes, what do these three blessings mean? And what connection do they have to the circumcision itself? Now, with the first verse, we bless the parents of the newborn child, that just as they have brought their newborn son into the covenant of circumcision, so too should they merit to bring him into Torah study, marriage, and good deeds. In addition, just as this circumcision will last forever, so too may their blessings continue forever. Now, the problem with this verse is that the order is reversed. It should be Torah, then good deeds, and then marriage. What it is is Torah, marriage, and good deeds. So the question is, why this order? So when a person becomes a Baal Tshuva, he comes close to God or attempts to, he may put on tefillin, he may eat kosher, keep the Shabbat, but for the most part, people continue to be who they were before they turn to God and to religion, basically selfish individuals. But then someone gets married, and the circle widens a bit, and they allow another person to share their space. They learn the art of compromise. But, for the most part, they're still a selfish individual. Then comes good deeds. What are good deeds? Good deeds are children. Now they learn the concept of what they call true bittle, true self-nullification. 
for once in your life, for once in your life, you actually want someone else to be better than you, to get in front of you in line, to succeed more than yourself. With this trait, we can learn to fulfill the concept of true bittal, true self-nullification before God Almighty. And that's what all these, life, these verses are about, connecting to God. And this is why all the three blessings are necessary. Without Torah as an instruction manual, we will be lost on our journey through the minefield that we call life. The Torah gives us the tools, but it is marriage and children that help us to grow and to implement the lessons that we learn on our journey. All of this helps us to reach closer and closer to our Father in Heaven and to serve Him. Now the next verse that is repeated is from Yechezkel 16.6. And I said to you, by your blood you shall live, and by your blood you shall live. Now, the simple reason for repeating the words to this verse twice is in connecting to the past, when our ancestors were redeemed from Egypt. On that very special night of Pesach, before the generation left Egypt, um, that they, where they, before they could eat from the Paschal offering, they first had to be circumcised. Moshe told the Jewish people to place the blood of the Paschal offering on their doorpost and also the blood of their circumcision. The verse is repeated, those two bloods. And this was done so that God would pass over their houses and save the Jewish firstborn. As we know, all the Egyptian firstborn were killed. I also believe that it contains a wish and a blessing to the newborn. Blood is associated with enthusiasm, passion, and warmth. We ask God to help him succeed in all of his endeavors. We say the words twice to allude to both in the secular and the spiritual spheres of life. We translate the phrase, in the future, you shall live. But in reality, the word chayi is present tense. This is to tell us that we should live in the present. As the saying goes, the past is history, the future is a mystery, and all we have is the present. And that is why it is called a present. The third verse that is repeated is from Psalms, again, 118, the first verse. Hodu Lashem Kitov, Kilom Chasto. Hodu Lashem Kitov, Kilom Chasto. Give thanks to God for he is good. His kindness endures forever. Now our purpose in life, one more time, our purpose in life is to recognize that there is a creator in the world that we must serve and we must serve him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just as we circumcise the newborn and remove the orla, the negativity connected to the head of his male organ, so too must we guard the head of our bodies to, so to speak, circumcise our tongues, to only speak in ways that bring honor and respect to God our Father and to ourselves. The only reason we were given a mouth was to be able to praise God Almighty for all the goodness that he has and will bestow upon us. Now, a bris, a circumcision, <clears throat> is a very unique mitzvah. The story told of Dovin Amela, King David, when he was already an older person, he was in the bathhouse, naked. And he felt a certain loss because he was naked of all mitzvahs. Again, he had no clothes. There was no way to make a blessing. You can't make a blessing when you're naked. So he was, he was naked of all blessings, not just naked of clothes. And then he looked down at his circumcision and the Medrash says that he was okay. He felt, he felt good when he looked at his circumcision. And that took care of his, his negativity of not having to do any mitzvahs. But why? And was this the only time he had seen his circumcision? He had been through this situation many times. What was this really about? And the answer is, Dovin Amalek, when he was in the bathhouse, was thinking to himself, sure, I've done many mitzvot in my life. But somehow, some way, every mitzvah that he thought about had a certain amount of yeshes, a certain amount of self within it. It was, he, he was doing it somehow, even though he did it for God, in reality it was connected to him and his ego in some way. 
Then he looked at his circumcision. There was one mitzvah that he had that was totally without ego, totally without self. But he was only eight days old when it was done. There was no way that he could have had the mitzvah done with any part of self involved in it. And that made him feel good. So it is the one unique mitzvah that we do without any desire for praise or for reward because we are not in that position to do so. So it's unique in that regard. Now once you know, and this is very important to hear, going to a circumcision is one of the greatest mitzvot that one can do. And there is a very tangible reward that goes with it. We have a tradition that Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet, attends all circumcisions. Now Eliyahu was told by God that he would be obligated to attend all circumcisions. He had said to God Almighty that the children of Israel would cease to keep the mitzvah of circumcision. And it's funny, we even set aside a chair for him upon which we place the newborn baby. When God told the old that he would have to attend all circumcisions and bless the people in attendance, Eliel said to God, you know that when I, will, I look at the guest and I see their sins, I'm not going to bless them, I'm going to curse them. To that God answered Elio, no problem. What I will do is before you come, I will forgive all the sins of all those people that attend a circumcision. So when you look at them, you'll see them free of all sins and then you'll be able to bless them and not curse them. So if you attend the circumcision, all your sins are forgiven. What a great reward. May God bless us that we should be able to go to many celebrations, especially the celebration of the coming of Mashiach quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and go to every circumcision you can.